Hello students. Now we are going to start with the second module of your examination and this is going to be one of the most important modules as well. Whether you talk about the prelims exam or the mains exam, go through the past year's question papers and you will see there is at least one question that has come from this module. And the fact about this module is that this is not just a module for science and technology, it is also a module for geography. It's a grey area between geography and science. So when you have to learn about what energy is and what basically are different energy sources, you need to understand a few things. First of all, what kind of energy are we looking at? So the thing is what we are going to study here are sources of energy. And out of these sources, we'll have a basic classification. This classification will be based on conventional sources, non-conventional sources, and finally you have nuclear energy. So conventional sources, non-conventional sources and nuclear energy. These are the three modules that we have to learn. Now when you talk about a conventional source, basically we have three major components that we have to study. First of course is coal, then you have petroleum and finally you have natural gas. So these are going to, to be the three components that we have to study under conventional sources or also called as non-renewable sources. Then apart from that you have non-conventional sources. Inside non-conventional, inside non-conventional we are going to discuss three major types. First, solar energy. Then wind energy and bioenergy. But this will, another aspect that we will add to it is geothermal energy. So these are the various areas that we have to learn when it comes to this particular examination. Now, when you talk about energy, what exactly do we mean by energy? If you go by class 6, 7th NCRT books, what the NCRT books say, is energy is the capacity to do work. So anything that can enable you to do work or anything that can enable any machine or any being, any organism to do work can be called as a source of energy. So that's why energy can be of different forms. You hear about solar energy, mechanical energy, electrical energy, heat energy. All these are different forms of energy depending on what source the energy is coming from. Now, why we are not going to discuss all the other aspects of energy because they are not direct sources of energy. They are one source of energy that gets converted from these major sources that we are going to study here. So, if you talk about the definition, energy can be called as the capacity to do work and it can exist in many forms depending on the source that is generating that energy. For example, this is a source of heat energy, right? This is a source of wind energy. This basically we are talking about electricity production. And so on. So you have different sources from which you get energy and these can be produced uh, and these are classified depending on what the source of energy is and what kind of energy is it giving out. So depending on that we define different kinds of energy. Now if we go by definition we have two types renewable and non-renewable. Under renewable energy you have solar energy, hydroelectricity, wind energy, geothermal energy and biofuels and under non-renewable sources of energy you have coal, petroleum and natural gas. Apart from that the third source that we have to study about is nuclear energy. Now, when I ask you, is nuclear energy a renewable energy or a non-renewable energy? What would your answer be? Many a times what I have seen is when this question is asked in the classroom, there are students who are divided. Some of the students feel that this is a renewable source of energy and there are some who feel that this is a non-renewable source of energy. And the fact is that it can be considered as both considering the factors that you are taking into account. 
For example, nuclear energy comes from uranium. The major source of nuclear energy or nuclear fusion reactors all over the world is uranium. Now, uranium is a mineral that is very restricted inside the surface of the earth, inside the core of, inside the crust of the earth. So, since it is something which is available to us in limited quantity, we should not call it a renewable source of energy. What after uranium is done? What after all the uranium in the world has been exhausted? How do you produce energy after that? If you consider this factor, it becomes a non-renewable source of energy. Again, a major thing that is associated with any non-renewable energy source is pollution. Whether it is coal, petroleum or natural gas, you have a huge amount of pollution which is associated with these sources of energy. When it comes to nuclear energy production through uranium, there also you have a lot of uranium wastes or nuclear wastes that are produced. So again, in that sense, if you go, it is very similar to a non-renewable source of energy. But there is an other aspect. There are a kind of reactors called as fast breeder reactors. So we have something called as fast breeder reactors. Now what these fast breeder reactors are able to do is that they produce more byproduct or they produce more fissile material than they consume. So the amount of fuel that they are producing is more than amount of fuel that they are taking is more than the amount of fuel that is given as input. So that's why what happens is in a way you are saying that more amount of fuel is produced than it is taking from its sources. So if we are able to use fast breeder reactors all throughout, in that case the uranium sources that you have will never end. So in that case it becomes a renewable source of energy. Secondly, when you say renewable source of energy, there are many areas from where uranium can be extracted or other fissile materials can be extracted. But since they are not cost effective, that's why we don't do it. But what if we start extracting all these sources of energy? If we are able to do that and if we start doing that again, in that sense what happens is the amount of energy that is available with us is very very high. And then again in that case you can say that it is a renewable source of energy. Because when we say that this is a renewable source of energy or a non-renewable source of energy, what exactly do we mean? The first thing that we mean for a renewable source of energy is the fact that it is sustainable. And when I say sustainable, sustainable for how long? Can I say that if something is sustainable for 100 years or 150 years, it will be renewable source of energy? Absolutely not. Because think of coal. The estimates that we have for coal in India is that we would have coal for coming 140, 150 years. Coal is not a renewable source of energy. So when you say it needs to be a sustainable source of energy, what exactly we mean is that it should sustain as long as the earth exists or it should exist as long as the relation between the earth and the sun exists. Because then only you can say that it is something which is renewable. Now think of sun or wind. Solar energy will be available to us as long as the sun exists. And as soon as the sun does not exist, obviously the life would not exist on the earth. Similarly, wind. Wind is also created by geographical factors. For example, rotation of the earth. Rotation of the earth creates wind. So if the earth stops rotating, obviously there is no life that is going to survive on the earth. So there will be no wind. So solar energy and wind energy in this case give you a sustainable source of energy, a sustainable source which will be available to us for a very very long time to come. So in that sense when you talk about a renewable source of energy it should be able to sustain for a very long amount of time and when you talk of non-renewable source of energy these basically are the fossil fuels. Then if you look at this this is giving you the top states that we have in India with respect to the amount of power capacity that they have from various renewable sources. So for example, Gujarat. The total amount of production that Gujarat can do is the highest. And we are considering everything starting from wind, small hydroelectric power plant, biogas, bioenergy, all the different sources of bioenergy. And when I get the total, I get it as such a huge amount of units. So that's why we, we actually are not counting solar energy here because solar energy is equally available to all the states all throughout the country. 
so that's why that's not a correct way to measure it but when it comes to all the other aspects all the other kinds of renewable energy sources that is where you can have certain installations or new capacity building over the state so that's why we are talking about only these sources so gujarat karnataka tamil nadu andhra pradesh and maharashtra these are the first five states when it comes to the installed capacity that they have in terms of all these renewable resources so this was a brief introduction to what exactly energy is what is renewable what is non renewable etc